Support for the show, FYF Sports, is brought to you by Manscaped, who's the best in men's below the waist grooming. Manscaped offers precision engineered tools for your family jewels. Manscaped is trusted by over 2 million men worldwide. Join the movement for all of your below the waist grooming needs. Get 20% off and free shipping with coupon code FYF Crew at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Use the code FYF Crew. Your balls will thank you. Hey, it's FYF Sports, man. It's Lamont. We are back with another podcast video. We are back today uh, with another special edition episode. Um, we got a special treat for you guys today. Um, and before we get into today's video topic, make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell to the video if you haven't done so already. Again, we are grinding to 20K subscribers. It's getting closer and closer every day single day um i think during last night's five hour live stream i think we gained over that five hour period about a hundred subscribers so salute to everybody who shares the video appreciate a lot of you new subscribers for just clicking on the recommended video jumping in the live chat i mean again it was a great debate uh, we were speaking on Lamelo ball if you guys haven't watched that live stream or if you weren't there to watch it live make sure you go re-watch that video it was, i would have to say i would have to admit that's been one of our best live streams thus far um just because of the strength and the debates from both sides a lot of people had good points and then the best thing about our debates is regardless of how intense the debates gets for the most part for the most part they don't get toxic uh, again we're dealing with a lot of uh, you know a lot of people we have men and women both speaking on that topic of LaMelo ball um, we had Charlotte Hornets fans we just had real avid basketball fans so so again it just made for a great NBA conversation so make sure you guys are joining our live streams we go live um, almost every single day in the evenings the only way you know when we go live is as you Hit the subscribe button, click that notification bell so you get all of the notifications when videos drop here at FYF Sports. Uh, but today, today is a special video because, you know, we spend a lot of time here at FYF Sports evaluating everybody else. We evaluate players, coaches, we do NBA film study, we do a lot of things here on FYF Sports with regards to critiquing other people. So I thought it would be a really good opportunity um, to give you guys the opportunity to critique me and my performance um, as a coach on the basketball court. Um, so a lot of you guys don't know, um, one of the jobs that I do outside of YouTube is I am the head coach of the Grand Canyon University men's club basketball team. Uh, and you know I've been doing this for over a year now and, and, and we've had a lot of success. And last year was one of our most successful seasons. Uh, extremely talented roster. A lot of guys that moved on to play either D1, D2, or D3 college ball elsewhere. Uh, and we actually made the uh, NURSA National Championship game. Um, and, and, you know, we had that opportunity to get to the championship game after a great tournament run. 
and I want you guys to evaluate our performance. Now, again, I'll tell you guys right now, unfortunately, that wasn't a game that we were able to win. You know, we played great up until that point, but we faltered in the championship game. And there are a lot of things, you know, as a coach, there are a lot of things that you can blame for the reason for your loss. You know, I honestly, I actually haven't, you know, because that that loss hit me so hard. I still haven't sat back and watched that game in full to really assess and evaluate what went wrong. And then with the pandemic and all of those things hitting kind of uh, abruptly ending all basketball activities over at GCU, you know, it gave me time to step away from basketball and put more time into this podcast. Um, and, and, and I still need to go back and do my film study on how we lost that national championship game. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you guys the opportunity. Now, you guys have seen all of my film study videos. You see how I break down uh, the plays, player weaknesses, coaching deficiencies, all of those things. Now, I'm going to give you guys the opportunity to evaluate me as I coach and my team. And I want you guys to hit me with the NBA film study. What went wrong for the GCU men's club basketball team in the national championship game last year? Where did we go wrong? Why did we lose that game? Um, and hopefully you guys can come into the live stream tonight with some with some great points for me and my team. Again, it, it, I dish out a lot of criticism, dished out a lot of criticism to LaMelo Ball. I dish out criticism to Kyrie Irving. So now we're gonna see if I can put my own feet to the fire and take some criticism from you guys. And again, you know, we take all criticism, positive, negative, you know, whatever you guys got to bring to us. So when we go live tonight, hopefully you guys watch the game in full or at least watch the most critical moments of the game. Let me know where our team went wrong. Um, and hopefully you guys can give me a great NBA film study evaluation on what we can do to improve our team. So um, just so you guys know, club basketball, and a lot of people don't know this, uh, club basketball is a there is a growing format of basketball here in the United States. So club basketball, it's not high school level basketball, but it's not D1 level basketball. Club basketball at the college level is generally for all of those college players that are maybe borderline, potentially making the D1 team as a walk-on or, or as a, as a mid-major player. And it gives a lot of these guys, They a lot of these guys could easily play D2, D1, or D3 basketball. But for whatever reason, you know, they didn't get it scouted properly. They turned down opportunities. Uh, for whatever reason, these guys just had to go study at either their local university or they wanted to just enroll in college and, and not really give as much time and effort to the game as basketball that it commands for most college athletes so we take all of these at high level athletes and we put them on a university club team um as you guys can see right here the first club team that i coached was in west lafayette indiana i coached the purdue university club basketball team we actually were lucky enough um in my second season with them to get to the NCBBA national championship game and we actually were able to defeat Pittsburgh in the national championship game in an epic comeback um, and I could have played that footage you know that footage you know that would have been really exciting for you guys to see that game um, give you guys a great breakdown of how we were able to successfully win that game but you know what that that's just a success it's easy to point out what we did right to win the national championship when I won that national championship with Purdue University. What I want to focus on is, again, when I moved on from Purdue University and had my opportunities here in Arizona, um, and now I'm uh, coaching the GCU men's club basketball team here at Grand Canyon, um, it was a challenge when I came down here. You know, basketball in Arizona is not the primary sport. So we're dealing with a lot of athletes who you know, maybe look at football or baseball or soccer as their number one sport. Unlike in Indiana, where basketball was everybody's number one sport. Um, I, I felt that the learning curve in Arizona, um, guys were much more, I would say, advanced in Indiana, you know, if I had to critique some of the players that I'm dealing with. But I feel like here in Arizona, a lot of the players are hungrier, all right? They, 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 they want to learn, all right? 
they're willing to show up to practice and put in the work. And I have to commend all of the players that I've dealt with here at Grand Canyon University for showing up, dealing with a lot of rigorous practices, um, really putting in the time on and off the court. And then also my players doing their own film study because we don't make this run to this national championship game um, that we did in 2020 if players themselves um, are not being accountable off the court, putting in the work in the weight room, watching film, and working on their games individually. So, uh, with, with, you know, with no further ado, we're going to go ahead and get to this game. Uh, hope you guys enjoy. Uh, but this is uh, Grand, Canyon Uni Grand Canyon University men's club basketball team versus, I think it's San Marcos State University out of California uh, in the NURSA National Championship game. Coming up now. Hope you guys give me a good NBA film study review. A gorgeous day outside here in the Valley of the Sun, the Phoenix area, as you are looking at the Canyon Activity Center, which just celebrated its one-year anniversary of being open in the last month. And we bring you to Grand Canyon University for the first time ever as they host the NURSA Region 6 Championship Series of Basketball. We've had 44 games in 44 hours and this is the 44th one, the final one, which features two teams in men's basketball, including the hosts from Grand Canyon University as they take on the Cougars of Cal State San Marcos. Good afternoon, everybody. Jim Howe welcoming you to a beautiful day outside and a fantastic tournament inside, which has pretty much run off without any problems at all since it began Friday night in the work of six months of very hard work by the tournament organizers here at Grand Canyon University. And it has come down to this. Two teams who have never won a regional championship in Nursa Region 6 before. In fact, GCU club team, which is the team that has been featured here, and made it to the championship game in 2017 when the tournament was held at UCLA in Los Angeles and wound up losing to their rivals from the intramural side and in campus recreation here. Both of those teams have done very well in this tournament. As a matter of fact, they knew that the home court advantage could come into play considering out of the 34 teams in this field, both on the men's and women's side, eight of them came from this institution. And so this team is here, GCU Club White. There are two different club teams, three different club teams, excuse me, on the men's side that took part of this 20 team field and they will take the court against the Cougars of Cal State San Marcos, who has battled back from two different big deficits in the quarterfinal round and the semifinal round to arrive here, including knocking off the defending champions from last year's Dixie State team. So, should be a very good matchup, and it should be one that you will certainly enjoy. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with NURSA rules and are just used to conventional men's college basketball, NURSA goes by a running clock. In fact, the clock only stops inside of two minutes of each half. The only exception to that is each team gets three timeouts they can use throughout the game, and if there is an official's timeout. Other than that, the clock keeps on running, and each team, again, gets three timeouts, and each team gets seven fouls in a 20-minute half before they hit the bonus. Again, the running clock is a running clock for two 20-minute halves. So should be back and forth action. We certainly expect that from these two teams. And so we hope you'll get comfortable and enjoy as we are about to present to you 2020 NURSA Region 6 Championship Series of Men's Basketball between Grand Canyon University and Cal State San Marcos. We got the starting lineups and all the play-by-play -play coming up on the other side of this break right here on GCU TV. Jim Howe back here at the Canyon Activity Center at Grand Canyon University. We started Friday night with 20 men's teams in this NURSA Championship Series. We're down to two, and it's time for the introductions of both. We go to center court. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the brand new Canyon Activity Center at Grand Canyon University, one of the fastest growing universities in the nation for today's exciting men's championship basketball. 
This is the men's championship game of the 2020 National Intramural Recreational Sports Association Region 6 Basketball Championship Series. Today's matchup features the Lopes of Grand Canyon University and the Cougars of California State University, San Marcos. Here are today's starting lineups, beginning with Grand Canyon University Lopes. At forward, number 10, Mason Peterson. At forward, number 12, Nick Brown. At center, number 30, Michael Ryan. At guard, number zero, Dustin Trout. And at guard, number 11, Trevor Ballard. The head coach for the Lopes is Lamont Lane. And now introducing the starting lineup for the Cal State San Marcos Cougars. At forward, number 14, Carter Swingle. At forward, number 32, Guggen Najjar. At center, number 12, Eric Papke. At guard, number 13, Jalen Lake. And at guard, number 11, Evan Stillon. The head coach for the Cougars is Ryan Groth. Officials for this afternoon's contest, Nathan Miller, Andrew Lopez, and Tyler Pham. So the scene is now set. Again, 34 men's and women's teams combined joining Grand Canyon University for this 44-hour odyssey. And we've already crowned, as you saw just a few minutes ago here on GCU-TV, the women's champion. That being University of California Davis, who knocked off Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. And now it will be the chance for the host school to come away with their first ever regional championship on the club side. Although the intramural side has won three different regional championships and even one national championship in the last five years. Tip is up, and it's controlled by GCU, and a quick three-pointer put up and missed by Mason Peterson. And the Cougars, who like to stay in games and just hang around, they battle back from big deficits. Here's Najjar out front. He'll fire a three and get it, and he's a guy who doesn't need an awful lot of room to be able to get on target just like that. It's 3-0. Three three-pointer put up and missed by Trevor Ballard. Ballard can put it up from the parking lot, but he, like a lot of shooters on this GCU team, can be very streaky. Here's a beautiful backdoor pass. Jalen Lake finding Evan Stallone, make that Carter Swingle, and just like that, San Marcos on top 5-0. GCU has gotten this far by winning five games and usually in very dominant fashion. In the corner, Peterson fires another three. That one rims around and won't go. So GCU 0 for 3 from the field, all from behind the three-point arc here in the first minute. Here is Jalen Lake, the point guard. Give it in the corner. Drive inside. Out for Stallone. Stallone faked the three. Drive in. His shot knocked away. It goes to Najar, who puts it up and in. And it's 7-0. Cal State San Marcos with a touchdown lead, and we haven't even played a minute and a half. Trout. Outside for Trevor Ballard, gives it back to Trout. Trout can shoot it from the parking lot also, but he also runs the point guard spot. Here's Michael Ryan out front. Nick Brown will drive in. His shot is rejected. Comes to the side, though, and it's saved by Ballard. He'll drive in. That one also swatted away, but this time contact and a foul. Foul called on Eric Papke, who has been an enforcer in the middle in the first two minutes plus. And the first free throws of the game belong to Trevor Ballard, but his first free throw is not good. And Lamont Lane, the second year head coach for GCU, quickly going to his bench, and Phil Wilson will check in as Ryan will take a seat. 
And Ballard finally gets the Lopes on the board with the second free throw. Cal State San Marcos 7, Grand Canyon 1 here in the early moments of this NURSA Championship Series men's championship game for Region 6. Lake out front, Wilson with a defensive assignment on him. Lake wants to work one-on-one. -on -one. Comes around the screen, wanted to get it to Najar in the pick and roll, but it's covered well. Here's Swingle back for Lake. That one poked away by Dustin Trout. They'll back it away and start again. No shot clock here for Nursa Rules, so they can go as many times as they need to. Papke goes in, turns around, tries to go up for the shot, and it's stripped away nicely by Phil Wilson. Knocks it out of bounds. The Cougars will keep possession. And they'll inbound it just to the left of their own basket. Lake looking, quick inbound for Papke. Hang in the air, that one's swatted away by Wilson. Lake gets it back, give it to Springle, or Swingle, he'll go up, and he's knocked down hard on the shot. Doesn't get it to go, but free throw time upcoming for the Cougars for the first time this afternoon as Phil Wilson whistled for the first personal foul for the Lopes. Swingle to the line, and the first free throw is good. Denzel Wanguma will make his first appearance into the lineup for the Lopes, wearing that white number 13 on the back of his road black jersey. The Lopes, even though this is the host university, considering the, consider the road team in this matchup. Swingle able to extend the Cougars' lead to 9-1. Here's Ballard, giving in the corner. Wilson's going to pump it up for three. That one won't go. But right inside, Wilson able to get it after the miss by Nick Brown. Puts it back up. The shot did not go. GCU still without a field goal, four and a half minutes in. But more free throws coming as Najjar is whistled for the second team foul of the first half for CSUSM. So Wilson to the line, and the first free throw misses everything. And so... GCU looking like a team that is playing their third game of the afternoon, but they can't use that as an excuse. The Cougars are in the same boat. Christian Zitney will check in as Lamont Lane trying to find any combination that will work for the home team right now. Wilson makes one of two, and it is San Marcos 9, Grand Canyon 2, still in the early going. Najjar start to drive, staying with him is Zidney, gets it back out front for Jalen Lake. Lake start to drive on the right side, keeps coming, he's cut off, Wilson tried for the tie, didn't get it, Swingle gives it back for Lake, they'll reset it again. Lake bluffing the three, wants to spread the floor. Stallone comes out to join him on the perimeter, and now a five second call. Lulling him to sleep defensively was Trevor Ballard. He was just close enough to force the possession turnover. So here come the Lopes, still looking for their first field goal of the afternoon, and we played six minutes here at the Canyon Activity Center on the GCU campus. Here's Ballard. He'll drive in. Here's Wilson. Wilson double teamed in the lane, has it stripped, gets it back, stripped again, and this time Papke completes the turnover. And San Marcos owning both halves of the floor in the first six minutes plus. Jalen Lake, open look, straight away three, got it. San Marcos 12 and GCU 2. And the fans who are in here cheering for GCU a little bit shell-shocked. Open look for three, in and out. Nick Brown again cannot find the range. And San Marcos able to control the board. We had a 21-point decision in the women's championship after tons of close games in the quarterfinal and semifinal round. And San Marcos right now threatening to do the same on the men's side. Here's Najjar muscling in. He'll fake, he'll shoot, he'll score. And the front court duo of Carter Swingle and Gaga Najjar were responsible for 11 of the 14 points. And Lamont Lane wants to talk about it. Timeout GCU, 12.55 left to go first half. And it's Cal State San Marcos 14, Grand Canyon 2, right here at the 2020 NURSA Region 6 Championship Series of Men's Basketball on GCU-TV. 
Back to live action in the men's championship game. And finally, GCU gets their first field goal as Christian Zitney with a nice drive. But then Jalen Lake comes right back for San Marcos and hits his second tray. And it's 17 to four. Ballard finally finds the range. He is their top three point shooter. And he showed it right there after missing his first three point attempts. Three three point attempts. GCU trying to get back into this trailing by 10. Jalen Lake has done a masterful job in the first eight minutes running the show for San Marcos. Start to drive on Sydney, keeps it coming. Give it off for Elijah Ellis, who comes to the free throw line, stops the dribble. Nick Brown now covering Lake in the corner. Back over for Ellis. Ellis, who just checked in during that stop and play, puts it up from 14. That's off the mark. And it's just GCU players underneath for the defensive board, Wilson Corrales. Now running the show is Wangoma. Off for Ballard, another long three. That one won't go. Wilson didn't have the position, almost was able to take the rebound away from Papke. Cougars come away with it. Here's Najar. Put on the brakes as he crosses the midcourt line. Give it off for Elijah Ellis. Now they give it back to Lake, who will reset and slow it up. We played nearly nine minutes in the men's championship. Lake feeling it. He'll fire another three and get it. And Jalen Lake is three for four from behind the arc. And San Marcos has equaled their biggest lead. Ballard trying to change that, but he'll miss another three. And he's one for six from behind the three-point arc. And right now, that's the difference. GCU unable to find the range, and San Marcos looking very comfortable. Cougars lob inside. Papke, one bounce, puts it up, no. Tip up by Najar, no. Najar takes it away from three different lopes for the second attempt. Can't get it to go, but he's fouled. So Najar winning some major hustle points. Draws the second personal foul on Phil Wilson. And Caleb Smith will make his first appearance in the Lopes lineup. Non-shooting foul, so the Cougars have it back. Driving all the way in, Springle, or Swingle. Give it off for Lake. Inside pass, there's Papke. He'll score. The Cougars did a good job of waiting for the mismatch to come, and Papke had the size advantage inside and took advantage of it. Here's Ngawa, all the way in. Got the open layup, but couldn't convert. And on the rebound, scramble, a loose ball foul call. Wanguma whistled for the personal. That is the third team foul of the first half for Grand Canyon. As Javier Durazo will make his first appearance in the San Marcos lineup. And CSUSM building on a 15 point cushion. Lake with the basketball, takes it to the left side. Wilson keeping the pressure on him. Now he gets it on a pick and roll and run to perfection as Stallone got the first step and lays it up and in. Lake with the assist, Evan Stallone his first field goal. Wanguma drives inside, has it stripped away. Fast break on the other end. Lake comes down. GCU trying to get set defensively. Stallon drives through two defenders, put it up and put it in. And right now it is all Cougars, 26 to seven. And the fans here at GCU look at a little shell shot. Nice pass inside, Trout for Zitney, but he's double teamed. Back out for Trout, his first three point attempt won't go. Zitney gets the rebound, and as he goes back up, it's knocked out of his hands, but he's fouled by Durazo. GCU so far two for four from the free throw line will head back that way for a pair. And Christian Zitney with his first attempts of the afternoon. And the first free throw is not good, so the struggle's continuing on all facets of the game for Grand Canyon. Carter Swingle got a very quick breather, and now he will give Guggen Najjar his first rest. As Zitney will fire up the second free throw after we get under the eight minute mark. And like his predecessors, Wilson and Baller, he makes one of two. And now apparently an official's timeout is, looks like there's some blood on the jersey of Najjar. 
And that automatically stops the game. So we will have an official's timeout. We'll take a quick breather. 7.52 left to go first half. It's Cal State San Marcos 26 and Grand Canyon 8 right here on GCU TV. Today at Whataburger, we're picking the Buffalo Ranch Chicken Strip Sandwich. You asked for it, and it's back. We got three chicken strips, two slices of Monterey Jack cheese, Whataburger's own buffalo sauce, a little bit of buttermilk ranch. The combination is just right. It's crunchy, and then it's spicy, and then it's cool. Your mouth is exploding with flavor. It just all works together, and then you add the cheese in there. It kind of wakes me up, honestly. My goodness. I can see myself eating this every time I come here. The Buffalo Ranch Chicken Strip Sandwich. It's back, and it's only for a limited time. Order all your favorites from your phone. Officials satisfied that the blood is not a problem and they have taken care of it. So now San Marcos with the basketball and a hefty cushion. Elijah Ellis open in the corner. Three-pointer won't go. Now GC wants to run. Trout racing down the right side. Keeps coming. Stop at the free throw line. Tried it inside for Zitney and it goes out of bounds. Last touch by the Lopes. And everything going right for San Marcos. They have been able to hustle the loose balls. They've crashed the offensive glass, and they're getting outside shots to fall. Michael Ryan comes back in in the middle for Grand Canyon. And Jalen Lake, who has been fantastic both on the assist side and the scoring side, brings it across the midline for Cal State University San Marcos. Seven minutes left to go first half. Hand off for Ellis. Ellis covered closely by Phil Wilson. Gets it out front for Javier Durazo, who drives on Ryan. Now he spins, got nowhere to go. Is it a travel? Is it a foul? Apparently, it's going to be an infraction on GCU. That'll be on Wilson, and that is his third. Only four team fouls on Grand Canyon, and Wilson has 75% of them. Non-shooting foul. Lake quick inbound for Stallone underneath. Tried to throw it out front. It's knocked away. Stolen by Zidney. Zidney comes down one on three, and he'll fight his way all the way in. Puts up the shot despite not having the numbers. Doesn't get it to go. But free throw time again for GCU, and they've got to start taking advantage of that. Foul is on Elijah Ellis. And so each team with four team fouls here in the first 14 minutes. Zitney back to the line for the second time in the afternoon, and the first free throw is good. Lopes just annihilated their first three opponents by a combined 116 points, but the going was a little bit tougher once they got into the quarterfinal round. As Zitney makes them both. They were able to beat San Diego State by 12 in a game that def definitely was closer than the final tally. And then ASU downtown from Arizona State University, which is their rivals on the club level, they were able to beat for the third time this year by 17 points and just kind of gradually wore them down. Now loose ball. Elijah Ellis trying to get it on the sideline, but he stepped on the out-of-bounds line. So as we near the five-minute mark, Lopes have trailed for the duration after the Cougars scored the first seven points. And Phil Wilson will bring it across the time stripe. 15 minutes down. Sidney trying to feel it, goes in, puts up the shot and gets it. But they'll wave it off and say that the infraction on Cal State San Marcos happened before he went up. Back-to-back -back -back personals on Elijah Ellis for the Cougars as Najjar will come in for Javier Durazo. Eight-man roster for Cal State San Marcos, nine-man roster for GCU, who actually normally go 14 deep, but they've had a lot of injuries in the last few weeks. There's another infraction, and Zitney trying to work on him and up that total and has gotten their wish. That's team foul number six. The foul's called on Lake. One more, and GCU's in the bonus. Non-shooting foul this time as Wilson running the point for the moment. Out for Dustin Trout. He'd like to get Trout on track. He'll go inside, put up the shot, roll around and off. Najjar fighting with three different lopes for the rebound. On the floor, jockeying for it with Michael Ryan and a whistle. And it'll be GCU basketball on the travel. So Trout inbounds underneath. Lob for Wilson, gets it out front. Here's Nick Brown. Brown start to drive. 
looking for a open look, can't find it, gets it to Zidney who fumbles, gets it back, and then when he gets on the floor, a holding foul called, and that will be on Jalen Lake. That's his second. That's certainly not good news for Ryan Groth, the head coach for San Marcos, because not only is it the second foul on his point guard, it also puts the Cougars over the team foul limit with 3.15 to go. And Zidney, who's had a steady diet of free throws the last three or four minutes, right back there in the one and one, and the first free throw's good. Christian, the native of Bowie, Maryland, now four for five from the stripe. And he makes it a 26-12 San Marcos lead as he makes the next one. Evan Stallone in, Elijah Ellis takes his two fouls to the Cal State San Marcos bench. And Jalen Lake, who also is playing with two personals, brings it up down the left side. Nick Brown now covering him defensively. Coming out to get it way out high is Papke, but away from the ball. A whistle is going to send it the other way. An offensive foul, and that's, I believe, on Jalen Lake. Or is it on Swingle? I think it was on Carter Swingle, which would be his first. And that's good news for the Cougars. That could have been three fouls on their point guard. Sydney out front for Ryan. They want to spread the floor as the Lopes try and get back into it. Nick Brown for three, off the back of the iron, not go. And Najjar all by his lonesome for the defensive rebound as we move under two minutes left to go before halftime. It's been a great first half for Cal State San Marcos. Lake almost lost it, Ryan in his face. Here's Papke, nice into the Najjar. Going for the steal was Nick Brown, came up empty in Najjar now with nine points on four field goals. 28 to 12, Cal State San Marcos maintaining this hefty double digit lead. Zidney drives in, finds daylight, puts it up. It's partially blocked by Papke, and it goes in anyway. So Zidney off the bench now with nine points to lead the way. He's got nine of the 14 on the scoreboard for the team that is the road team in the matchup, but the home team as far as the host university. And now an offensive foul out front as Najjar stuck the hip out to try and spring Lake loose. And so the foul starting to add up at the tail end of this half. Stops the clock with 66 seconds remaining. But Najjar with two, Lake with two, and Ellis with two. Wilson has three of the four fouls on the ledger for GCU. Trout's shot won't go, and GCU still cold from the field as Najjar goes to the floor to get the loose ball, but he's called for a travel. Or did he call a timeout? Yep, he called a timeout to avoid that violation. So we will take a break. 55.4 seconds remaining. Cal State San Marcos 28, Grand Canyon 14. We'll take a 30 second breather and be back on GCU TV. The NURSA Region 6 Championship Series Tournament also brought to you by Universal Athletic, which provides services to every school and college in nine states in the Western United States and is the number one independent team dealer in the country. Universal Athletic for the athlete in all of us. Well, the athletes have been in force on the Cal State San Marcos side. We're in the final minute of the first half and they have led for the duration. The lead is 14 at the moment as Jalen Lake gets it in for Papke. Nice pass inside as Najjar snuck in, put it up and in, score it, count it, foul, and send him to the line as Najjar now in double figures with 11. Foul called on GCU's Christian Zitney. And the Cougars who have led by as many as 19 try to get it closer here in the final minute. And that one gets the shooter's roll. Emblematic of the half. 30 to 14. And again.
Again, the Lopes trying to find some offense, and they have not been able to find it from the field. Here's Zitney. Zitney with a half a minute to go. Gets it off for Nick Brown. Brown throws it out front for Dustin Trout. Here's Phil Wilson back out for Zitney as the Lopes look like they're going to go for the final shot of the half. They still have 14 seconds to do it. Trout fake the handoff to Zitney. Go to the right side. Back away. Down to nine. Now eight. Ryan is double teamed. Has it knocked away. Has to scramble for the ball. That's a hell ball. And the possession arrow again favors Cal State San Marcos. And they have 5.7 seconds to go to the length of the floor to try and add to this. Lake waiting to touch the ball. Now he does. Racing down the right side. Long pass for Stallone. Turn around, fall away three at the buzzer. Will not go. But a near perfect first 20 minutes of basketball for Cal State University San Marcos scoring the first seven points of the game, leading by as many as 19, and they will have a 17-point edge as we take it to the halftime break. We will come back with our halftime show after this. It is halftime in the 44th and final game of the 2020 NURSA Region 6 Championship Series of Basketball. And here's your score. The Cal State University San Marcos Cougars 31 and the Grand Canyon University Lopes 14. Keep it here for more right here on GCU TV. back here at the Canyon Activity Center, one of the newest buildings on an ever-growing Grand Canyon University campus in the heart of the Valley of the Sun, Phoenix, Arizona. And they've got one of their teams on the club sports side here at the finals of the NURSA Region 6 Championship Series. But they've got some work to do as they trail Cal State University San Marcos 31 to 14. Well, this tournament, it's the first time that GCU has ever hosted this tournament. There are 10 different region tournaments that go on between mid-February and mid-March to determine who goes to the NURSA National Championships, which will be held the first weekend in April in Wichita, Kansas. The winner of this goes on. And as I said, a lot of work over the last six months from a very dedicated bunch of individuals on the club sports side, Dan Nichols, Mark Nelson, Taylor Potter, Aslan Finfrock, and Matt Gordon. And on the campus recreation side, Matt Lamb, Chris Kuchler, Mike Fox, and the tournament director, Zach Erdman. Speaking of campus recreation and intramurals, let's take a closer look at that department. Universal Athletic, one of the proud sponsors of the Nursing Region 6 Series Championship Tournament, provides services to every school and college in nine states and in the western United States, and they're the number one independent team dealer in the country. Universal Athletic for the athlete in all of us. Jim Howe back here at the Canyon Activity Center, and this great tournament has come down to 20 minutes remaining. And Cal State University San Marcos, which has not won a Region 6 championship, is on the doorstep. They've led by as many as 19. They score the first seven points of the ball game. They have a 31-14 edge. As a matter of fact, Grand Canyon has not been closer than five points since the first couple of minutes. GCU wearing the black uniforms will start off the second half with the basketball. And that 20 minutes could go very fast. It's very hard when you've got a running clock to be able to mount a comeback. We've seen several. We've also seen several overtime matchups in this tournament. But GCU is going to have some work to do to make that happen. 
Here's Dustin Trout, quickly up, gives it off for Nick Brown, and he throws it away. Right into the hands of Guggen Najjar. He'll come down on the break, stop at the free throw line. Will he take it? Yes, he will. That one rims around, won't go. He tips the rebound to the side, and Mason Peterson, who didn't see a lot of action in the last part of that first half, brings down the board. Here's Trevor Ballard off for Peterson. They would like to see Peterson get on track. He can be a deadly shooter when he's on. Here's Trevor Ballard, backdoor pass. There's Trout, can't get it to go, but he gets the rebound, taps it over to Phil Wilson. He'll put it up, score it, count it, foul. Send him to the free throw line. And now Cal State San Marcos wanting a clarification as I think they were calling the foul committed on Dustin Trout on the pass off. They're going to count the bucket, and they will whistle Jalen Lake for his third personal foul. And they're going to give it back to GCU, and a quick inbound to Mason Peterson. He hits the three, and that's a five-point play that begins the second half. And for the first time since the beginning of the game, the GCU bench is up and exhorting on their charges. Here is Lake. Driving on Peterson, he'll put up the floater. Looked like it was partially blocked, it's an air ball. But then the outlet pass from Wilson to Trevor Ballard hits the legs of Ballard and squirts out of bounds. Costly turnover as the Lopes trying to seize the momentum here in the first minute plus of the second half. So the Cougars will have the ball and they'll inbound it just to the right of our own courtside location here at the Canyon Activity Center. 10 different courts, and we are on the feature court, which is court seven. Jalen Lake takes the dribble to the right side, picked up by Peterson. And the fans trying to make some noise. They haven't had a lot to cheer about. The one's cheering on the Lopes. Here's Papke, has it stripped away. Phil Wilson makes this deal. Outlet it for Trevor Ballard. Ballard, stutter step, drive in, off the glass and get it. And suddenly this team, which thrives on raw emotion, Suddenly showing signs of life. They've, sco they've scored the first seven points of this second half. And it's down to a 10-point game. Still a lot of basketball to be played. Lake will hand off for Evan Stallon. Stallon picked up by Trevor Ballard, stops the dribble. Lake comes out to get it. Lake has been really a major force in that first half. Now he's going to fire a three and get it. And that's exactly how he's been a force running the show and hitting threes from well beyond the arc. That's his fourth. Now as they bring the ball across the timeline, Andrew Lopez, one of this three-person officiating crew, is going to give a sideline warning to Grand Canyon for being a little bit too demonstrative. Three-man officiating crew, Nathan Miller, Andrew Lopez, Tyler Pham. So GCU gets it on the side. Trailing 34-21. Nick Brown start to drive, almost travel, and actually he did. Lake got to the spot before Brown did, and Brown on the stutter step lost his balance. So another turnover on Grand Canyon. And the Huskies have been faster and quicker throughout most of this game and trying to reestablish that after GC ran off the first seven points of the half. Here's Lake. Covered by Mason Peterson. Start to drive, gets on the first step, kicks it out front, open look for Stallone for three, and he got it. Back-to-back -back threes by the starting backcourt for Cal State San Marcos. Brown goes the other way, coast to coast, score it, count it, foul, send him to the free throw line. So GCU answers back, trying to stem the tide. Foul is called on Carter Swingle. That is two on the starting small forward. And Brown to try and convert the three-point play, which he does. Lopes struggled early on in the game. Started to hit their free throws down the stretch, and with that one, they're now eight of 11. And the GCU fans coming to their feet. Here's Lake, almost lose his balance, off for Stallone. Drive across, throws up an acrobatic shot and gets it to go. Score it, count it, foul, send him to the free throw line. And so far, everything that the Lopes have thrown at the Cougars, Cal State San Marcos has had the answer. Foul is on Mason Peterson. That's the first team foul of the half for GCU. 
And Stallone will head to the line to try and capitalize on the three-point play and bring it back to a 16-point edge. 19-point lead has been CSUSM's biggest. Lopes have never tied or led. Free throw, bounce around and off. And Brown comes away with the rebound. Here's Ballard beating everybody up the floor. He'll score. So GCU, who had not had a chance to get out on the transition the entire first half, trying to utilize it to its advantage. Back to a 13-point Cougar lead. Jalen Lake, as GCU extending their defense out past the three-point line, wanting to spread the floor. Zitney now with the defensive assignment on him. Lake now kicks it over for Papke, way out on the perimeter. No shot clock, so they can use as much time as they want to. Swingle in for Najjar, who tried to spin away from a possible tie-up by Brown. Brown doesn't get the Brown doesn't get the jump ball. He doesn't get the travel. Instead, he gets the foul. That's his first non-shooting foul. So Cal State San Marcos will reset. Throw out front. Stallone now driving on Caleb Smith. Double team puts it up. Count if it goes, it won't but he'll head back to the line and the foul is on Phil Wilson. That is four fouls on the backup forward for GCU, Phil Wilson. So Stallon, who has gotten very active offensively in the last three or four minutes, and he's got five of the eight points Cal State and San Marcos has in this second half to show for it. Goes to the line for a pair, makes the first. Denzel Wanguma back into the GCU lineup. And Trevor Ballard will take a seat as we move towards the 13-minute mark of this second half with the running clock. Stallone's next free throw, that's good. San Marcos now five out of six free throw shooting. The Lopes conversely eight of 11. Here is Caleb Smith inside for Wilson. Try to get it to Wanguma. And Wanguma did a nice job just to keep it from going behind him out of bounds. But as he tried to control his balance, he traveled with the ball. So every time GCU tries to swing the momentum, they get a costly turnover and they get one here. Let's see if the Cougars can take advantage of that. Here is Carter Swingle and his Swingle tried to put on the brakes. Feet came out from under him, and he's called for the walking violation. So the Lopes of the lineup of Phil Wilson, Nick Brown, Christian Zitney, Caleb Smith, and Denzel Wanguma. Inside, won't go Wanguma fighting for the rebound. It goes down to Smith, and then he's tied up. Possession arrow will send it the other way. Elijah Ellis up off the bench for the Cougars who have just three bench players. The Lopes with just four. He'll check in for Cal State San Marcos and now Michael Ryan returns to the GCU lineup and Phil Wilson will sit down. Remember, Phil Wilson with four personal fouls. Full court defensive pressure employed, but Lake able to get it in and now the Lopes will back off. Eight and a half minutes gone by. And the 17 point lead for the Cougars pretty much maintained. They lead 41 26. Here's Ellis. He'll put it up from 18. And there it is, right back to that 17 point lead almost on cue. Ellis with the score. That is the first bench scoring for Cal State San Marcos this afternoon. Here is Wanguma. Backs it out. Now wants somebody to come get the ball. It's Caleb Smith. Smith will drive, stop at the baseline. Cross court pass for Wanguma. Outside Nick Brown, outside the arc. Wants to work one-on-one. -on -one. Bangs into Stallone, no harm, no foul. Over to Wanguma in the corner, Ryan. Good ball movement, they get it to Zitney. He's got an open look for three, it won't go. Ryan gets the rebound, but he pushed off to get it. Didn't have the inside position, and that'll be a loose ball foul. Team foul number four on Grand Canyon. As Trevor Ballard returns, Caleb Smith sits down, and we near the midpoint of this second half, and so far for Cal State San Marcos, no damage done. Each team has scored a dozen points here in the second half. Lake being pressured out front near the midcourt line by Nick Brown. 
Drives to the right side, now back to the left. CSUSM content to take some time off. And now Brown gets tangled up with Lake. And that's an easy foul to call. Second foul on Brown, fifth team foul on Grand Canyon. As Javier Durazo will check back in to the Cougars lineup and give the starting center Eric Papke a breather. Non-shooting foul as Lake will inbound in front of this good crowd here at the Canyon Activity Center who have gathered to watch this 44th and final game of the tournament. Here is Stallone, drives, kick for Najar. He can shoot it from there, but that one won't go from three-point range. Here come the Lopes, they want to run. Brown gives it to the trailer. Ballard, his three-pointer short. And a long rebound for Lake, but he doesn't want to put the pedal on the gas because of his 17-point cushion, so he'll slow it up. And he'll play one-on-one -on -one with Nick Brown just to use some time. Brown goes for the steal, comes up empty. Here's Ellis. Ellis will drive, gets bumped around, and in the jockeying is whistled for the personal. I don't think they'll give him continuation, and they won't. But Nick Brown has now picked up his third, and the Lopes are out of fouls. One more, they'll put Cal State San Marcos in the bonus as Mason Peterson returns to the GCU lineup. Michael Ryan will check out, and we move under nine minutes left to go. Here's Durazo on the baseline. Gets it in for Stallone. Has it knocked away. Goes right into the lap of Stallone, who falls out of bounds with the ball in his hands. So that'll be a turnover. Stallone wanted a foul, didn't get it. And the Lopes need to get busy. Eight and a half minutes left to go in this one. And they have been fighting upstream the whole day. Brown. Wants to spread the floor, handoff for Peterson. Peterson thought about the three, passes it up. Give it to Trevor Ballard, covered by Lake. Drives around him, drives in. The little teardrop is good by Trevor Ballard. Well, Ballard has six of the 11 points here in this second half. Ellis out of backcourt, off for Stallone. Stallone backs away, fires a three, high off the back of the iron, not good. And it's Juan Guma who skies above everybody to take down the defensive board. Scoops it for Ballard. Ballard across the lane, kick in the corner. Open look, Mason Peterson for three, no. Zitney with a rebound, another attempt. Ballard, long three, got it. And they have been waiting for that, the home fans have. For Ballard to finally get on track, that's only his second three. And it's still a double-digit lead for Cal State San Marcos as Lake brings it across the timeline. Seven and a half minutes left. Lake will drive, working on Peterson. Stop and pop from the free throw line. That's off the mark. Juan Guma again with the defensive rebound. Took it away from two different Cougars. Juan Guma comes down, slows it up. Here is Zitney. Zitney will drive. Scoops it up. Oh, wouldn't go. He goes down, no harm, no foul. Here come the Cougars. Cougars leading 43-31 at the seven minute mark. Can they hang on to win their first region six title? Lake again content to take some time out off the clock. And now he's bumped, no harm, no foul. As he throws it to Ellis, there is a foul. Out front on Trevor Ballard, and that is team foul number seven for the Lopes. And so it's free throw time for Cal State San Marcos. And Elijah Ellis, who has not been to the line yet this afternoon, in a one and one situation, has to make the first to earn the second attempt. And the clock continues to tick towards the six minute mark. First free throw is good. San Marcos, three for four free throw shooting in the half, six for seven for the game. And Ellis can't make the next one, but Papke skies above everybody, then throws it away after he gets the board. Stolen away by Wanguma. Drives inside, has it knocked away, stolen away. Carter Swingle comes into the front court with the steal. Off for Durazo. He's going to back up and fire a three. That one won't go. Ellis finding for the rebound as it knocked out of his hands. Ballard comes up with it, and then Ellis will bump him and knock him down to pick up his third personal foul with 5.35 left to go. That's only team foul number three. So the Cougars have plenty of fouls to give. Ballard will inbound it in front of the San Marcos bench. He and Wanguma the backcourt at the moment. 
Lamont Lane, the coach, going all small. Ballard, turnaround from 12 is good, and Trevor Ballard starting to heat up. Four points at halftime. He's got 15 now. Lake splitting through the defense and staying out of trouble. The lead is down to 11, and the Lopes just scrambling around to try and get it out of his hands. It's a tough task. Swingle drives, gets it for Papke, out for Durazo. Cross court for Ellis. San Marcos content to play keep away until Ellis loses the ball. Then Ellis fights to get it back from Zitney, and then he is fouled as he tried to get rid of it. Home fans not happy. Foul is on Wanguma. And again, with CSUSM and the bonus, it's a one and one situation for Ellis, who made one of two a moment ago. And that's not the most important part because the time continues to tick. Four fifteen and counting, and Ellis taking his time at the stripe. The first free throw is good, which will earn him the second attempt. Trying to make it a thirteen point cushion again, and he can't do it. But it's tipped away, and Papke able to come up with it. San Marcos again with the basketball, and the lope starting to run out of time. Lake being pressured by Wanguma, out near the midcourt line. Gets up in the air, give it to Papke, back to Lake. Lake knowing there's no shot clock and knowing that they have to foul, which also continues to contribute to the clock elapse. Ballard picks up the foul out front, and that's nine team fouls. So the next one will mean a two-shot foul no matter what. Now remember, in Nursa play, there are three timeouts for each team. Each team has used one so far, but Lake misses the free throw. So the Lopes with the basketball and a foul in the backcourt. Or did they call a timeout? Apparently a timeout on the floor. We'll take one. 3.03 left to go in this one. It is Cal State San Marcos 45, Grand Canyon 33 in the 2020 Nursa Region 6 Championship Series on GCU TV. Three-pointer put up after the timeout by Nick Brown. It's short. Cal State San Marcos with the basketball and a 12-point lead. And they are just 240 away from heading to Wichita, Kansas, the first weekend in April for the Nursa National Championship. Brown going for the steal. Papke able to save it. And Lake's got it in the front court. Again, no shot clock. So the Cougs are content to play keep away as Mason Peterson will foul. That's team foul number 10. And the Lopes are just about out of chances. Clock continues to move, and Papke will go to the line for a pair. Lopes have never led in this one after getting dominant performances in all but one game. Shortest margin of victory for them has been 12 points. That was in the quarterfinals against San Diego State, and they downed ASU downtown by 17 points in the semis. It's been much closer pickings for Cal State San Marcos in their road here. They won by 15 points and six points in their pool play games as Papke makes one of two. Then a dominant performance against one of the other club teams from GCU, GCU Black by 26, but they won by two in the semifinal or in the quarterfinals and then by 10 over Dixie State, the defending champs in the semis. The drive by Ballard is good. Brown will foul. Evan Swing or Carter Swingle in the backcourt. That will stop the clock as we are under two minutes. And we'll send Swingle to the line for the first time since the first half. He's two for two. Lopes have not been closer than nine points in this second half. And they've trailed by as many as 19. First free throw is not good. This is the second appearance by Grand Canyon's club teams in the last four years in the NURSA Championship Series. The first time around, they were actually beaten by their brethren at GCU Intramurals. That was back in 2017 at UCLA. Swingle makes one of the two, 12-point lead. 
Lopes after hurry, minute 40 left to go. Dustin Trout driving on Lake, hands off for Ballard. They know he's the one that has to shoot it since he has the hot hand, give it to Trout. High arching three, got it, Dustin Trout. Picks the perfect time to get his first scoring. Lead pass, there is Papke, can he save it? Yes he can in a jar. Minute 25 left to go and Peterson forced a foul. That's his third. Stops the clock with a minute 22 left. And so Guggen Najjar, who has made his only free throw attempt on the afternoon, that was back in the first half, will try to make this a double digit lead again. 47-38. And the first free throw is good. Najjar actually led the team in scoring at halftime with a dozen. That's his first point after halftime. Next free throw, that's not good. And now a lane violation, I believe, is going to be called, and it'll be against Grand Canyon. So that will give Najjar one more try. 82 seconds remaining. And the Lopes just about out of miracles. That one is good. 49-38. San Marcos on top. Trout quickly out of backcourt. Off for Brown. Give it to Peterson. To the driving Zitney. He'll move to the hoop. Put it up. Wave it off. Traveling violation. It was a late whistle, but one that needed to be called. And so the turnover gives it back to San Marcos with a minute 10 left. Lopes will employ full court defensive pressure. Lake offers Stallone. Stallone weaving through traffic and then sets up the alley-oop for Papke, but he can't get it to go. Here come the Lopes with a minute left. Trout will stop and fire for three. High off the back of the iron, not good. Papke with it. He'll be fouled in the backcourt to stop it with 54 seconds to go. And the Cougars slowly starting to sense the celebration. Foul is on Caleb Smith. And both teams making the long trip down to the San Marcos free throw line. First free throw by Papke is good. And he can, for all practical purposes, finish this one off and make it a five possession game with the next one, which he does. Now they're gonna say that Papke, who was not confident in his shot, Stepped in the lane too early, that'll be a lane violation. But it's still a 12-point Cougars edge. Ballard out of backcourt, lane right on his hip. He'll stop, he'll fire an off-balance three, that one won't go. Papke skies over everybody for the rebound. Long pass intercepted by Trout. Still 40 seconds left, GCU not going away. Trout will back away, fire a three and get it. Well, this team can shoot threes. They can be streaky at it. Now Smith goes for the steal. Thought he got all ball, but instead a foul in the backcourt. And a technical foul will be called on head coach Lamont Lane, and he better be careful. He was out on the floor. So that was an easy call for referee Andrew Lopez to make, and that will give Stallone two free throws at the San Marcos free throw line. And once he's done, then Jalen Lake will get his chance to put further distance between them and Grand Canyon. Stallone misses them both. So it's still a three possession game. And Lake now going to the free throw line And 29.8 seconds remaining. Lake misses the free throw. So San Marcos continuing to at least make it interesting. Needs one to make it a double digit lead again and does. And with the technical, San Marcos is gonna get the ball back. So half a minute to go and the Lopes are gonna have to go for the steal then try to go for the foul. Inbound to Lake, and Lake will be grabbed and fouled by Caleb Smith. So Lake back to the line. That only took a second and a half off the clock. Lake.
Lake with 13 points on four three-point goals. Makes the first. And the second. 12-point game. Inbound to Trout. Trout comes up, stop. He'll kick for Peterson. Peterson drive the base, give it to Zidney. Zidney will lay it up. Oh, falls off the front of the iron. And the rebound comes down to Carter Swingle. He's fouled in the backcourt, and that should do it. Foul is on Christian Zidney. And Carter Swingle, who is three for four from the stripe, heads there for a pair in the double bonus. Nursa Region 6 Championship Series Tournament brought to you by BSN, the largest provider of team sports equipment and apparel in the country. Also brought to you by Streets of New York, the official pizza of Grand Canyon University, pizza, pasta, and subs. Brought to you by Universal Athletic for the athlete in all of us. And brought to you by Whataburger with 19 locations in the Phoenix area alone. Whataburger, just like you like it. Shot up and in. 10-point game, five seconds to go. Papke gets the long pass. He'll put it up and in. And that's the way this one's going to end. A 12-point win as Cal State University San Marcos leads from wire to wire, scoring the first seven points of the ball game, leading by as many as 19, and not allowing GCU with several runs in the second half to get any closer than eight points after halftime. So the two teams shaking hands, and Cal State San Marcos has punched their ticket to Wichita, Kansas, and the Nursa National Basketball Championships at Wichita State University, April 3rd through the 5th. And congratulations to them. Congratulations to Grand Canyon for a great performance throughout the tournament. But the Cougars are the champions of 2020. Congratulations to them. Also congratulations to the University of California Davis. California Davis are women's champions. Also heading to the Jayhawk State the first weekend in April. Well, we want to thank our great crew, Al Porteous and Gina Sandos overseeing it, Robert Purcell, our director, Dylan Parrish and Zachary Kelly providing you the great sights and sounds. We also want to thank our great tournament committee, Zach Erdman, the tournament chair, Matt Lamb, Chris Kutzler, Mike Fox, Dan Nichols, Mark Nelson, Taylor Potter, Aslan Finfrock, and Matt Gordon. And we would like to thank all of you for being a part of this, the first time that GCU is hosted and the first time we have brought you the Nursa Region Championship Series. So that'll do it from here. So this is Jim Howe speaking to you from the Canyon Activity Center on the Grand Canyon University campus in the heart of Phoenix, Phoenix, Arizona, reminding you the final score again in the championship game on the men's side of the 2020 Nursa Region 6 Championship Series. It is the Cal State University San Marcos Cougars 55 and the Grand Canyon University Lopes 43. Good night, everybody.